All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. It is episode 12 of Table Fire Tuesdays. It is a very special episode, not just because our guest, but because Liv Morgan defeated Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. John's very excited about Fuck that. Ronda Rousey! John's so excited he couldn't wait to let the guest be introduced. He had to get that out there. Yeah, I did. I'm so happy. I mean, it's a good, it's a good thing. I like it. I'm happy with it. And but theories, Mr. Money in the Bank. For episode 12, we have a long-awaited guest, the fourth bro... Dozer! Hello, hello, how are you? Thank you for joining us today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know who I am. I'm your champion, Nick Natural. And I'm the future Chair Shot Chronicles champion, Johnny Mega. In your dreams, John, in your dreams, like I always say. Please place my title. Well, you just handed me the title thing. Oh, Who's John, title? I let you. Uh, no, I... Whose title? Oh, me, the champ, the champ. Oh. Okay. Mine in the future. Sure, sure. All right, so me and John kind of brainstormed and compiled some questions. And let's start off. So we know that you are a heavy, uh, heavy uh, workout guy. Workout. Sure. Workout guy, yeah. I guess you would say. <laughs> what, what would you say? Uh... <laughs> A weight, tra enthusiast. weight training enthusiast. Oh, okay. Let's do there it. we Let's go. Let's call it that. Right. There, there's no cardio here, boys. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, if you got to do a workout with any wrestler of your choice, who would you do it with? A workout with any wrestler of my choice. I would love. I would love to see what the hell Lesnar's doing, man. Yeah, I've seen videos of him like throwing the he like has a full fucking body punching bag and just mm -hmm. throwing I it mean, in the dude's air. Dude's an animal. Lashley, I'd like to yeah, see Lashley. Lashley. The one. bigger guys are really where I'm at with the Strowman's a good one too. Dude, Stro yeah. Well, I've seen when he used to do his uh, like strongman lifting. Yeah, dude was mm -hmm. a monster. And I remember I watched a video monster. with him. In C remember we watched that thing with him and CT Fletcher. It was, it was mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. Jinder Mahal, and Biggie. yeah, it was Biggie. Biggie. That's right. Yeah, that was wild. That's yeah. I mean, that's really where I'd like. I to, would wonder. I would like to see what Cesaro does. I was honestly just thinking that Cesaro's a good one. You know, for for him, I mean, he's he's a big dude, uh -huh. and you know, unfortunately, standing next to a lot of guys in the ring, he doesn't seem as large as he mm. really is. Yeah. But pound for pound, probably one of the strongest that are in that ring. Yeah, and he just debuted in AEW. Can't wait to see what he does there. Right. Right. Also, based off of what I've seen Cena do with Sheamus, I would pick Cena. Yeah. Because he like does some crazy shit, especially for like flexibility. Dude, I was gonna say he got very limber, very limber, wild, and it, like for a dude his size, like he moves. So that's a, like right. that's decent. Um, so using that question for a segue, who's your favorite physique in professional wrestling of all time? All time, mm -hmm. all to warrior, the warrior. <laughs> oh my well, God, the warrior. So I had a, I had a, I had a uh, assumption of who I thought that you were gonna pick. Okay, and I thought you were gonna pick Lex Luger. Mm -mm -mm. No, <laughs> but I get I get why I warrior. Get warrior. Like it makes sense. Um, okay, well we're sitting here and we're enjoying a drink and you're enjoying a cigar. I have yeah. yeah. Oh, cheers! Look, might as well, right? There's future losers. Shots are being fired at the yeah, title. They are. Low key shots are being fired at the title. Oh, that was not low key. <laughs> but if you got to pick um, any wrestler that you could mm. share, not let's let's do three people. You and you and three people, and you got to hang out and drink and have a cigar. With <clears> who are you picking? All right, I'm the first guy that I think of, and none of you guys are really gonna. I don't think you're gonna relate to it at all. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Ooh, yeah, sure. yeah I like that. that's a good one. I, I mean, I don't know if in real life he really matched that character. You know what I mean? In mm -hmm. like his personal life. Yeah. But based on his character, that that's a guy to party with, <laughs> for sure. Oh. I think everybody wants to sit and have a beer with Austin. Mm -hmm. That's that's a definite. And then um, Ron Simmons. Ron Simmons. Like Ron Simmons, yeah. I mean, really, I, I, if I could throw four, I would just sit with the APA and just oh, wow. cigars and drinks. I mean, See, I've really heard it. that, like, JBL's an asshole. I wish. Really? I mean... I feel like anything that they talk about on Dark Side of the Ring when they bring up JBL, people, like, have the worst <laughs> shit to say about him. 
But I, I think he also knew where respect was supposed to be given. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's probably a hard ass, and that's why people thought he was an asshole. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, given the era, you know, like, yeah. I think he had to be, you know? He was one of the guys that really enforced, like, who was, who was the, the judge in the locker room? I feel like a lot of people say at the time Taker was. Taker was. Oh, like if Taker gave you the whenever, approval, whenever, yeah. whenever something happened back there and you had to present it, like mm. they literally held like, from what from what I've seen anyway, it's like they've said that they've had a whole court and the judge was the Undertaker every time. Yeah. And even JBL was just like, you went to him and what he said went, and that was it. So I mean, but I mean, I think everybody has that. That moment of when they've been assholes. I mean, they've said over and over again when he was growing, like growing in the company. Orton was a major, apparently. A major oh yeah, kid. yeah. And Miz, apparently, Miz is like supposed like a lot of people hated Miz. I think Miz plays into it very well. Yeah, I don't think they like what Miz represents, like, like the that real world, real, like that. the reality star yeah. wrestler, the dude who made like he became a wrestler in a different way. It's a very Enzo way of making it. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, if you talk Just about it today, concussions. yeah, and if you talk about it today, like, think about it, like, Morrison, he was that same type of dude. He came yeah. from, like, acting and parkour and became a wrestler. Yeah. People praised yeah. him. People never yeah. said shit I mean, about well, him. he got denied on Tough Enough the first, well, like, two times he auditioned to be on that shit. True. And then they go on to, like, be one of the famous seasons where, oh, they signed, like, five right. guys from that season. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, so I feel like it wages and, like, they don't respect him on a level because of that. Um, here we go. Let's do this one. John, I think you, you made this one, right? Um, oh no, let's use this for the segue. What wrestlers do you think would be cool or would be a dick in real life? No, oh, yeah. I think we just already addressed that. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, I guess we, I think it's best to just go like shotgun with it, just throw out some names and you really just go, hey. Like, are they cool or are they or not? <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's probably the best way to do all it. All right, so I mean, let's just gotta throw out. Go this. ahead, John. Do it. Five names. Yeah, let's go five. Go. Damn five. All right. Um, Rock. Mm. Start off light. The Rock. I would say, light. I would say cool. Oh, you said The Rock. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think he'd be all right. I don't think he's a, a dick. Brock Lesnar. Um, I would think he's fine. I think a lot of people when they see how he is. If he really doesn't like being around people, as he said before, like yes. yeah. a lot of people take that as a dick thing, as a mm. dick thing. But I totally get it because I honestly I feel this. I don't like human beings. Mm -hmm. That's true. Like mm -hmm. people, I gotta warm up to some people, man. Yeah. When I first meet people, it's I, I I come across a little timid and I'm standoffish. But that's just because I don't know you, the type of person you are, what you're about. Yeah. And that's really like that's a big feeling out process for me. So I totally get it. In Brock's sense, where people think he's a dick, but I don't think he is. I think he's just a down-to-earth, let-me-live-my-life kind of guy. Yeah, I yeah. feel like if you knew him and he was, like, your boy, he'd probably be hella chill. Oh, look at his character, like, character dude, now. no reason. And his character now. Dude, honestly, dude, I, I love what Brock. they're doing now. I love Cowboy what they're Brock? doing now. It's badass. I love it. I love it. They finally found a way to spin him as a face. Yeah. They were like, Brock, we want you to be better than Hangman Adam Page. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Alright. <laughs> Next, I got... Seth Rollins, mm. a little controversial one. Mm. I think he, he I think he's a bit an I think he'd be arrogant, really. I agree. Yeah. I think. I I've heard know. stories that he's like a real dick. Oh I mean, yeah. I mean, I feel like maybe like um, he's like a guy that like also, if you don't know him, he's probably an asshole to you. Probably. And I don't think he's an asshole like for no reason. I, I get with that arrogant. No. I feel like he gives a cocky demeanor. Like, he thinks his shit don't stink. Right, right but I, I also think a lot of the, um, a lot of wrestlers that come across very boisterous are actually pretty quiet mm -hmm. in real life, and if that is how he, how he can be, then I can see how people think that he's just a dick, when really it's just a... He's like a quiet dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's really it, you know? All right, two more. Damn, I gotta think now. To a woman. Uh... Oh, man. Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair, I think she's probably really nice. Yeah. yeah I, I think so. I, I low-key had a crush on her. No, I am no too. Issue. I low-key had a crush on her. Oh, <laughs> I don't, a lot of people are just like, you know, you see these like, kind of like, I don't want to say bra, she's not bra-like. Like fit, very like, fit. Really fit, strong, 
Like, people up. look at these women and probably just be like, wow, that's unattractive. Mm. I think it's awesome. I had a crush on Beth Phoenix back in the day. And she was just this, like, <laughs> dude, yeah, yeah, you can squeeze my head. Go for it. Yeah. Squeeze my damn head. <laughs> squeeze my damn head. <laughs> All right, and who else? Do a, do a old gen. Old gen? All right, um... I'm just gonna throw this one out there because like not a lot of personal stuff comes out about this guy really a lot. Gangrel. Gang, I think he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, to you, have those you, you were married consistent. You were married to Luna Vachon. Luna Vachon. Mm-hmm. Like, you gotta be fucking awesome. <laughs> and to have you those have teeth to. in and run with that character as long as yeah, he has to be cool. He's still doing it. Yeah, I, mean, no, like, I know. It's crazy. He showed up on AEW, didn't he? I oh yeah, he did. Like he did with like the like uh, with he was with the young bucks and they were dressed yeah. the Hardys and then the Hardys came out to save him because they did the bullshit. Right, right. He was like, "Why did you even help them in the first place?" The grand girl's like, "I'm sorry, man. I needed the money." I think that was the stuff. <laughs> at the least you, the gimmick they went with. <laughs> this is honest, right? <laughs> Dude, Here's it's another it's fun one. one. I'll what just need. throw one last one. It's a fun one. Virgil. <laughs> Virgil. <laughs> he's probably really cool. Yeah, <laughs> most likely. Let me post on Instagram. He's hilarious. hilarious. I, I have I don't even I've oh, yeah, yeah, he's following. great on Instagram. He calls himself the meat sauce god. Awesome. He loves Olive Garden. He's so funny, bro. The king of breadsticks. Oh Jesus. He'll post like pictures of like people <laughs> DMing him saying that they're like he's such a big fan of him, he'll be like, Pay me. Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. How about this? We uh we had people from all the different eras. What's your favorite match from each era? And I guess eras you would make it like the classics, like way back. Then you do Attitude Era, and then you do like Current Day. Okay. I mean, I honestly don't have an input on Current Day. I really don't follow very much. Mm. Um, I feel like Current Day would be after, like, like Current Day could even be like early Cena, like when yeah, like Ruthless mm. Aggression. Okay. Um. All right. So let's go. We'll start off with classic. If I go classic, it's obviously Savage and Steamboat. Yeah. For sure. For sure, um, they those guys they went out there and they know they had they knew they had to steal the show and they stole it. Mm-hmm. They the they Mania three one right killed it. Yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. of course. Well, they've done it multiple times. Right, no, but that that was like that was one. the one man. Like, it's so funny because I feel like when you talk about wrestlers, like and people who are of that high caliber wrestler, I feel like Steamboat gets not his name doesn't get thrown out there a lot. No, doesn't, and it totally should. Oh, he's on like all. a Ric Flair caliber, I think. I I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. Flair they he's unmatched. Flair is unmatched. You can't you can't say I just think like on a wrestling level. Maybe not a showmanship level like uh, like you're saying like do you technicality? Like, yeah. Like as I far mean, as performing just if you had to if watch you're him throw, match. like technicality, I'd put him on like a Bret Hart level. Bret Hart was so technical. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. So technical and I'd put him on that level in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Yeah. Um if you want like attitude era My favorite was probably when Foley won the title on Raw. That, like, kind of cemented the, the end night. of the Monday Night Wars. Yeah, that yeah. was, like, the that same night the... they did um, the Finger Poke of Doom. Mm-hmm. Right. But that was the... That was definitely huge for me. The way the crowd was, like, nobody will understand how that crowd was. Yeah. Today? No, oh my Jeez, God. no way. That place erupted, and they knew what Foley was, was going happen? to win. And everybody still turned the channel to watch it. Yeah. I feel like it was just because, like, everybody wanted to see Foley get what he was doing. Oh, of course. Of course. So that that's a big thing, too. If you want to go more modern... I really enjoyed Cena beating the hell out of JBL in the I Quit match. Oh, Where shit. Where he's all bloody at the end? Beating... Beat the hell. Both of them were bloody yeah. messes. Didn't they do the spot on the, the limo? Yeah. Yeah. Beat the... But literally, dude, he beat the hell out of them. Yeah, that was And that was just match. incredible. That was such a great match. Because it was just like, I remember weeks and weeks of, mm. of JBL shitting all over Cena. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you get your reaction. Yeah. You know? You have to just feed into that and get, get the audience to hate you that That was much. That was for so the... That, they um, cheer for him. that was for the old school belt, correct? It wasn't for I the spinner. Think so. I think it was the it spinner. It was like it was like but JBL it, had the undisputed one, and Cena had already debuted the spinner. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, because it was after I thought he 21. beat JBL at that, and then introduced the spinner. Maybe. I thought he had the U.S. spinner first. He did. Yeah. And maybe. then, then I think I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure after that was when they brought out the WWE spinner, the champ, oh, the championship. 
But I think he had already done a spinner with the U.S. title before. Yeah. That. Oh, the U.S. definitely came before. Oh yeah. That. That's I what I mean. Say, so he like had that, that going. Time was yeah. like wasn't it after Mania Twenty One? I don't or know before? exactly. You'd know better than I would. Yeah, I, I that know. match, I'm not that sure. I don't recall. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Who who's got the best beard in pro wrestling? Come on. For me, like the entire Wyatt family, <laughs> <laughs> all of them, including Strowman. Inclu I I got to include Strowman in that. Those four guys were the beards. That's they were true. the beards. That like for me, yeah, for sure. I'm I would and say pick Daniel Bryan. Triple yeah. H. Yeah. Because it was like it was the always some beard. wild like after he shaved variation. His head, after yeah. he shaved his head. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. The only other beard that I would say that he had that was good was when he did the freaking the chops into the mustache. I don't, I don't even know what the hell you call that, but that was pretty. That was pretty awesome. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That that I mean from yeah. The Wyatts really. Who do you pick for beard? Brought oh, Daniel Bryan said it. Oh, yeah, Daniel yeah, yeah, Bryan. Yeah, yeah, he could beard too. He really did. Taker, you can't you can't put out Taker for because he was always doing variations of the goatee oh, yeah. with like the different. But that was when, mainly when he was doing the ministry. Ministry, yeah, that was his time for that. How many other guys? I don't know if there's tons of guys that rocked full grown beards, like full blown beards. Big John Stud, yeah, mm -hmm. Tony Nese, he had a good one yeah. for a while. Yeah, Buddy I mean, Murphy. Oh, yeah. Buddy Murphy. Ugh. <laughs> 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 um, okay, who? Who has your favorite comeback story? Comeback. I know who I pick. Favorite comeback. I pick Jake the Snake. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm going to being a dude who could have friggin' killed himself and like died from alcohol you talking poisoning like and all just crazy shit. In, like, in life. life. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. In life. The life. <laughs> Flair. Flair. Dude. Flair had too many exits on his highway. Mm -hmm. There were so many, like, especially, like, after his son. Yeah. Dude was in a spiral after that. And he's doing yeah. another match soon. He's doing his last match soon, right? I think it's July 31st. How do you feel? I, I'm going to ask you a question he's when gonna it comes to that. He's going to die in the ring. He's well, going to die in the ring. So. I'm, I'm making the prediction. Don't make that no, prediction. No, I'm not. No. My question. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Knocking his head. It's got to be made of fucking wood at this rate. Um. Nah, now I forget where the hell I was going with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, your question about it. Yeah. Do you think... All right, so... It's been so long since he's done anything, for one. Huge match, HBK. Is HBK going to be a little upset that he's going to do one more match? Well, after that match, he did more matches anyway. Impact. Did it? Yeah, an impact. Oh, um, so he already said fuck it to the HBK match. Yeah, yeah I, you think that's a little I bit guess, of a... I mean, I guess, like, you could really say, like, HBK has, the be like, the last big-scale yeah. match he'll ever do. Like, I don't think he'll ever beat a WrestleMania match. Like, it's a... And, like, no. no. He'll never that's... wrestle another guy in WWE, that's for damn sure. So, like, yeah. I mean, but that was also a thing, like... Michaels, after he had the, the career-ending match with Taker... He absolutely his, had his thought, Right, WWE. but his thought process was... It would be disrespectful to Taker to come back and do a match after doing something like that. Yeah, he did. I mean, he still, I, and he, he still did, did. But he right. did it with Taker. He did it with Taker. So that, that's why. Does that kind of make it okay? Like, I guess. I yeah. think so. Yeah. He did him and Triple H with Taker. With Taker and Kane. Yeah, that was a that shit was a show. show yeah. yeah, that was a yeah, that was horrible. They even say it was a shit show. Oh yeah, show. they know. They knew exactly. For a comeback story, I'm, I'm gonna throw an underrated one out there. <laughs> Matt Hardy. Yeah, he's got a great one. I, yeah. I wish sure. I could say Jeff after, even though after well, everything that just happened. You can't. But it sucks. Can't. But right. I mean, look, like well, the Matt yeah. thing, <laughs> he's got yeah. the whole betrayal from Edge and the whole Lita scenario. Yeah. Like, that's right. one and thing. And they played into that and he kind of had, he he had to be okay with that and make that work yeah. in his career. He left was, and was posting uh, suicide notes on Twitter. He was a Twitter. dude who left WWE and then just had to go make a friggin' name for himself everywhere else. And I'm going to say he's probably one of those dudes that like left WWE and went to the indies and Killed used it. the indies to fucking... Really, really, really elevate his career, like shit, like that Zack Ryder's doing now, yeah. or the shit that like McIntyre had to do. Injured. Yeah, or like the shit that, that McIntyre had to do when he got released. Yeah, yeah, he had to go be yeah. Drew Galloway and like do all this different shit and like really make a name for himself and on the indie But see, and so let's let's segue into Cody Rhodes now. Mm -hmm. How many people think, oh, what the hell are you doing? Like you left with a certain kind of feeling, and now you're back in WWE. Is it because of the money, or? 
Did he have to leave to prove that he can fucking do something outside of what WWE Creative is doing? Just to show that he's actually a fucking contender and can come in. No, I, I think it's a little both. And work. I think it's both and the I fact that him, he wrapped himself up in AEW with not allowing himself to be a challenger for any, like... Just, and for the world right, title. but I think that's pretty damn humble. Yeah. It is, because... That's I really like humble. It's like, he's not there... Looked at he's it not as, there to... He's, he wasn't there to leave and just get a title to be recognized as a yeah. face of a company or whatever. He just wants to show, hey, I can work, but yeah. you have to let me work. Yeah. And that was a thing. Yeah. So I, w- I want to be the person to say it w- it's not about money at all. I don't think it was about I don't money think it was. at all. I think, I think it might have, have been a little bit about money. I think after AEW, you well, had I mean, that money. And it was I'm sure fine. it always it's comes the, into play. Obviously, it's a career, right? And it's a plus that he's making yeah. more bread. I'm guaranteed. Sure, that's probably sure. Him, but, but I don't. I don't think in in his mind. I don't think it's wow. I'm broke. I need money. I got to go back. I, I think, think it's, it's about more taking so his name I can back. Freaking work. Putting his name in the gold section. Sure. Sure. Put the Rhodes name back where it should be. I mean, like, I Dusty always had respect for Dusty. Right. Like, I always thought Dusty was a great wrestler. It's never was like, I was like, damn, what the fuck was this? But, like, I feel like he doesn't have any of that stuff on paper. Yeah, no. Right. It's just by That's what you said. That's why Cody's going to do what, he, what his father could and, do. And I feel like he used the AEW thing to get his plaque. Like, he used the indies, just like he used a Ring of Honor, and he used the Bullet Club, yeah, and New he Japan. used AEW and New Japan sure. to skyrocket himself. Now he's in a position to go to WWE and say... I'm gonna do what I want to do, I don't and they're gonna be like, "Well, okay, sure." So I feel like he needed to earn the I'm gonna I'm gonna call it my own shots. Yeah, respect I, first exactly instead of being like, "Hey, go out there and listen to Orton the whole match," right? Or go out in the Rumble and Taker's gonna tell you what to do. Like those stories are like, yeah, him young, him and like still developing who the fuck he was. So I feel yeah, like he's still team with Hardcore Ollie. Yeah, yeah, and then they had him do the whole Stardust yeah. bit, like. But you know, even even being dealt a shit hand like that, yeah, we, he made it work. He did. But he like still wasn't getting the recognition that he should have gotten mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. That's probably where he was just like, you know what, fuck this. It's like, okay, you give me this, I run with it, I make it something, and you're still just gonna screw me over. I think you a, see, they're sense. probably the most consistent family that exists in wrestling. Like where they all kind of have that same style, and they're all the same kind of like kind of wrestler, like Dusty. Dustin and Cody. Yeah. Because Dustin's good as fuck, too. I feel like he's hella underrated and doesn't get enough recognition, too. No, definitely. No, I, I wouldn't say that the, they're the most constant family. I, I would say consistent Cody, with each other. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, not consistent with each other. Look at all your Samoans that are in there now, dude. See, I think that, that too, but I also think like, there's a right wide now, range man. of it. Like, well, yeah. Because, like... They had yeah, their like an own army. niches and different elements, and I feel like Dusty Golda start. Like, You're just started, saying like, in a wrestling that. style. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Like, I, I can take that. Having I mean, their dad's style and in, in, like contributing that. Sure. Sure. I think. I think you have Dusty. You have Cody. They're two different styles. They're not the same. And then Dustin is the combination of the two. Yeah, I feel like Dustin has like a, he's a lot bigger of the old guy. school he's stuff, bigger, but can still move. Cody has a yeah. very new school implemented sure. way of like if you took these two old school wrestlers and plopped them in today's gym. Sure. And I feel like that's what makes him stand out now because he like has that Bullet Club sprinkle of yeah. flavor in there. Fla- flavor. So I feel like it helped him. Um. What is a who is a wrestler that you think that you can beat in a match? Gilbert. Gilbert. <laughs> I think I could beat Eugene. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna throw this out there. That motherfucker's technical as hell. I don't think you could beat Eugene. Eugene. I don't think so. I really don't. I, I forget his actual name. But wrestling technicality, the man was actually very, mm-hmm. very good. You know, and probably still is, right? Mm-hmm. But um, obviously, everybody just throws, oh, like he, he played a mentally challenged wrestler but the dude was actually very technical and could move yeah which is huge um okay let's do oh, I got one. Oh, okay okay James Ellsworth James Ellsworth, Ellsworth. no chin <laughs> no chin music no chin music oh Jesus we got the no chin music versus the double chin music mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Grim <laughs> shout out to Grim um Okay, let's let's jump into this since we're rounding up towards wrapping it up. But 
I started to do this thing and I started to do a little bit of a word association. So I'm mm. going to give you a word and you're going to tell me a wrestler that comes to name when I say it. Word and a wrestler? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Or it won't be a word. Maybe it'll be like two words, like a phrase or something like that. But you'll just tell me the wrestler that you think of. I'll do my best. Okay, so. No the, new shit because I have no idea. Oh, no, no, no. No clue. So the first phrase would be underappreciated. Underappreciated. Buddy Murphy. Get that. Shut up. Buddy Murphy. <laughs> Un- You're really pissing me off. That's why you don't hold the fucking title now. <laughs> the shit that comes out of your mouth. <laughs> fucking Christ, man. Have you heard what's coming out of your mouth? That's why you'll yeah. never have a title either. I don't know about that. I held the original. But that's for another That's for another time. <laughs> I'll talk about that later. Um, underappreciated, I'd have to go with... Ravishing Rick Rude. Oof. Yeah, great one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Ravishing Rick Rude. Cue the, cue the Christian Bale, American Dude. Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, all right, next that. one is Canada. Canada. I mean, uh, duh. Christian. <laughs> again. <laughs> again. You know why that popped in my oh, head? From Jesus. the promo he's got you, this week on do you, Dynamite. You know what's bad? You know what's bad is that for me, I automatically thought of Test. <laughs> just and because, they were on the TV just because, together. I know, but really for me it was Test because I just the, what popped into my head is the when he's waving the Canadian flag and Kane comes out and just wrecks. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Wrecks them all. Dude, that was awesome. I thought of Huge Christian Kane and Jericho. Fan. Huge Kane fan. And I thought of Jericho too. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought of. That I mean, everybody first. would probably always go like Bret, Bret Hart, like the Hart Foundation, like all that. But all right, Test. <laughs> next one is Swole. Swole. <laughs> Swole. All right, dude. Chris Masters, dude. Oh, Swole. Wow. Swole. Ryback. Swole. Dude. He was a close second for me for physique if it wasn't for Warrior. Oh, wow. He had that same kind of... Dude, dude's just brolic. As much much hate as he does get. As fucked up as he is in the head. He's he's not (laughs) fucked up in the head. You're fucking fucking stupid. (laughs) Oh, that smack himself in the head made him. You're stupid. Fucking stupid. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Oh, dude. What? Is an animal. (laughs) Come on. Safer swole. Swole? Oh, fuck. I'm gonna go, like, beginning Batista. Like, the yeah. beginning of his career Batista. Yeah, I, I and thought, Brock. I thought of Brock as well. Off the but rip, I, I was thought, going Batista. um, Big E. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good one. When, see, I think we have a different idea of Swole. For me, Swole is, like, the oiled up. Jacked as fuck, like juicy looking fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> I think like not like less veiny. cut, more you veiny. Big, like you need veiny, like yeah. They have to be a walking hard on. They have mm. to be. And we're back. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Had to swap out memory cards. Um. Next word. You next word for the. I didn't have to take a poop. <laughs> I didn't take a poop. <laughs> there you go, guys. Quick bathroom break. <laughs> um. Up. All right. So whatever scotch you guys gave me sucks. Did we? I don't know. I didn't give him that. Who gave him that? I think he, you're lying, Nick. I think you. Gave I, him that. Well, I think it was these Aaron. Rumors coming Aaron, from your your assistant. She brought me Aaron. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, Aaron is Brendan. Yeah. Just as a woman. Yeah, he's got a tight <laughs> ass, I'll tell you. Right? <laughs> he's got a tight ass. Um, okay, so final one on the word association oh, mouth. <laughs> is United Kingdom. United Kingdom. White oh, Barrett! Come on. White dude. Barrett! You think of Wade Barrett? That's who I thought of. Just on the top of my head. British Bulldog. I don't know. I think of Walter. Who's Walter? Go- Gunther. Who's Gunther? Walter is the guy. He's from. No, uh, no, no. Get out. Who are these people? You don't know who Walter is? God, no. You're not allowed on the podcast. Um, episode scrapped. We're, yeah, we're he good. wrestles for. He well, he wrestled. That's why for he can't be champion. And folks. An NXT UK, and now he's the he's Intercontinental Champion right now. Yeah. Yeah. He's so like a know. mean he's shop. The, yeah, he, is he used the crazy to lead Imperium. It was like this big ro- yeah, like. Yeah, I still don't know what you're talking about. Still... Maybe if I show you a picture, you'll know. Um, it's possible. It, yeah, maybe.
Yeah. I like how you searched yeah, Walter, and the I... first thing that came up was Walter White. <laughs> There you go. Nope. Wow. He's got a mean chop. Yeah, he does. Walter White. But who would you guys say for UK? I said British Bulldog. British Bulldog? Wade Barrett. Mean, and Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett. Yeah, that's really... That's just who came ahead first. That's, that's for me. Uh, that's what it is. <laughs> All right. And then I think there's one that I left. I want to I wanna go back to underrated. Oh, okay. okay. The Brian Kendrick. Underrated. He's hated very much I now. I don't care. But I, I uh, Underrated. think that he had a great tag team. I loved him with Paul London. Um, and I love the sliced bread move. <laughs> and I love his theme song. <laughs> I'm the man with the plan. He comes out dancing with Ezekiel Jackson. <laughs> I forgot he Ezekiel Jackson. Yeah. Ezekiel Jackson would just walk with him. And he'd be dancing. Swole. <laughs> the white blazer. Ezekiel Jackson. Another dude. Swole. swole. Yeah. Ahmed Johnson gives Swole. me like Ezekiel Jackson vibes. No. <laughs> um, Ahmed Johnson was wasn't he like a pimp? Who Ahmed Johnson? <laughs> now he's that dude. No, that used to wear like no, the no, red. I know. Boots in, but I'm saying oh, in I think real he, life he was. A oh really? Pimp. Oh shit! I don't know. I like, think. In real life. I think. I'm pretty sure. He was a pimp <laughs> um, okay, let's let's end it on this one. What superstar do you think have has had the best gear? Over time. Shit. Taker. That's pretty simple. In his whole career, though? I feel like, like Kane? I mean, that those are... Kane has evolved. The man... Everything evolved. And that was I feel great. like the clear one to say is Shawn Michaels. Because of all the variations yeah. of tights. But I feel like it's very cliche. I would pick Rey Mysterio. True. That's true. Guy. Did you see... I, I, you, you guys probably saw it. I just saw a picture of it recently, and I didn't watch it. But he came out as... What you, what's his name from fucking... Uh, Peacemaker? Oh, it's an edit. It's an edit. Oh, god damn it! I saw it it's the other day. It's an attire that oh. he did wear. He wore a green but someone edit some Cheetos. Somebody edit it? Hey, oh, god damn it. Never mind. I saw it the other day and I looked at John and I said, did he do this? Brilliant. He edited it in the Cheetos. When, I, I, saw like, oh, it, when oh. I saw that, I was like, dude's brilliant. Dude's brilliant. <laughs> and he, I feel like he, he's never, I've never seen him wear the same thing twice. Lately, yeah, he has been. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, I guess I get it now and later in his career. I thought when he does like bigger events, when he does bigger events, he definitely does some different stuff. I think he's gonna retire. I think he's gonna have his last match with Dominic, and he's gonna get it moving. They're gonna have Dominic go possible. heel. Very possible. That's like the dream way to go out. I think. That's Nick's dream way. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Nick's like Dominic will no longer be Dominic. He'll be Mysterio. Mysterio. Then they get Just copyrighted. Mysterio. Just then Mysterio. they get copyrighted by Marvel. <laughs> I don't even think that would work. It could. I don't know. Um. Okay. Well, guys, this has been episode twelve. How's everybody feeling? Usually, at the end, I like to open up the floor and see if you have any questions to ask. At the end, do I have questions? Yeah. Um. How are How are you guys enjoying doing your podcast? We don't really talk too much about it. You've been doing, look, you said this is episode 12. Yeah. How are you guys feeling about and it? And we have more than 12 episodes, too. This is twelve episode 12 of just Table Fire Tuesdays. Table Fire Tuesdays. Tuesdays. True. And we have Chair Shot Chronicles, True, so how are, how, are you, how are you enjoying it? Um, I'm loving it. I mean, we I have great things coming, and I'm loving being champion. Not for um, long. But we're about to make a very big upgrade in yeah. locations. So. That's nice. That's nice. And I do have one more question. It's directed towards one person in particular. Where's my brother? What? Where is my brother? Do, do you know something that I don't know? I don't know anything. Is it? Because we haven't heard from Joe since he's been on the episode. I haven't heard from him either. That's all the questions I have. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us for episode 12. I'm your chair shot champion, Nick Natural. For now. To my left, we have the fourth bro, Dozer. And we have the future champion, Johnny Mega. I don't know, John. The way mm. things are going, it looks like you may have some questions to answer, but I think so. But all right. 
Until you're ready to answer them, guys, go check out Axe and Sledge Supplements. Use the code DOZER10 for 10% off. Get juicy as fuck and be strong and fucking pretty. Hell yeah, guys. Peace out, and we will see you next week. It's all about the game. How you play it? Oh. Hey, man. Woo. Hey. Woo. I don't like that you're calling me out on my show. Watch your place. You don't call me out on my damn show. Watch who you're fucking talking to. These are some pretty big words for a little man. I don't think you realize you're the clown on this show. I'm just here to point it out. I want to know where the fuck my brother is. I haven't heard from him in weeks. You're not going to find out. Hmm. Woo! Ah!